One of the first steps in digital photography is achieving proper exposure values. No matter what type of capture device you use, it's important to get the exposure correct by the numbers before you bring any files into Photoshop. When working with an 8-bit color file, we have 256 levels of grayscale value in each of our red, green, and blue channels, starting with 0 pure black and ending with 255 pure white. It's the white with detail and black with detail numbers that we're most concerned with. 240 to 245 is white with detail. Anything brighter than 245 will tend to burn up in the final image. 128 is our middle gray number, and 20 to 25 is black with detail. Anything darker than 20 will tend to block up in the final image. It's achieving the perfect 256 levels when we turn in the color file that's most important. Let's take a look at how this relates to ways a digital camera captures in raw capture mode. The 256 levels that we have in an 8-bit file are small in comparison to the 12, 14, and 16-bit files that we can create with digital photography. Most digital SLR cameras capture in a 12-bit per pixel mode. This means we're capturing 4,096 levels of information, and when we open this up in Photoshop, it converts this to a 16-bit mode, giving us 65,532 levels. The more expensive digital camera backs will capture in 14 and even 16-bit captures, giving us a true 65,000 levels of information. If we can start with 65,000 levels and then work our way down to the perfect 256 levels, we have much more usable information in the final file to turn over to our clients. Let's look at some of the ways we can change tone in a digital image. I've opened up a simple grayscale gradient in Photoshop for us to look and see how the tonal corrections change the tonal values in the image. Let me start by going under the menu under Image adjustments, brightness contrast. This is the simplest of the dialog boxes for tonal control. By going under the brightness slider and moving it up, we're adding white to the image across the board. By moving the slider down, we're adding black to the image. We'll go back to zero. By going under the contrast slider, we're adding black and white to the image and adding more contrast from both sides, but you notice we have no mid-tone control. So this is a very basic uh, dialog box and can only do so much for us. Let's go ahead and cancel this and go under Image, Adjustments, Levels. This will be Command L on the Mac, Control L on the PC. I'm going to go ahead and use my space bar to change my tool to the hand tool and move the image up a little bit, get it out of our way. You can see we can visually see the entire histogram and by moving the sliders we can add more contrast to the image but we now have the added ability of changing our midtone contrast and we can change this midtone point up or down to change the transitional area of our midtone. I'm going to go ahead and use the option key to change the cancel to reset. This will be the alt on the PC. This allows us to go back to our starting settings. On the output levels, I can make the image much flatter by bringing the two sliders in. This gives us a lot more control than the brightness contrast, but there are still other ways with even more control. Let's go ahead and hit the cancel. I'm going to go under Image, Adjustments, and now go to Curves. This will be Command M on the Macintosh, Control M on the PC. The Curves dialog box does a lot like the levels. We can flatten the image out by flattening the line or we can also make the image more contrasty by making the line steeper. I'll use the option key to change our cancel to reset. You can see now we can use put many points on the curve of the line and change these points around very very subtly to add changes in the tonal range wherever we need it. I have much more control on an image when I'm using curves than I'm using in levels. I'll go ahead and hit cancel. Now I also have something very cool in Photoshop called the Shadow Highlight Adjustment. As I open up this dialog box, I'm going to go ahead and make our image smaller by doing Command minus, and I'm going to use the space bar to change it to the hand tool to move our grayscale where we can see it. On the shadow slider, as I move the slider up, I am adding a shadow brightening curve to the image. 
by working with the tonal width and radius numbers, I can control just how much of that information I'm grabbing. And you notice as I'm changing that, I am not uh, doing anything to the brighter part of the image. I'm controlling just the shadow part. On the highlight side, as we move the slider, we are adding a highlight darkening curve to the image. Again, with tonal width and radius controls on the slider, we can really isolate just the area we want to control. On the color correction, if we start to lose color as we add a correction, we can put it back in with more saturation. By moving the midtone contrast slider around, we can actually add or subtract contrast in our midtone areas. This is a quite a nice dialog box for a one-stop fix on an image. I have one more thing I'd like to show you, and that is using blend modes. I'm going to hit the F7 key to bring up the layers palette. By pressing Command plus, I'm bringing the image up larger, and by pressing the space bar, I can move the image around on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and take the background layer and drag it into the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette. You can see by turning the eyeball on and off, nothing really happens while we're in normal mode. But when we change this to multiply, we are doubling the density of the image. I'll go ahead and just change the opacity to 50%. And you can see it's about a one-stop darkening of the f-stop in the image. If I turn that layer on and off, we can see here we're darkening the image down. If I change that blend mode from multiply to screen, it's like opening up the f-stop. By pressing the 5 key, we're changing the opacity to 50%. So by 1 key is 10%, 3 key would be 30%. So we can see how we're changing the density and brightening the image up as we change from 50 to 70 to 90%. This is a great way to brighten the image and darken the image without adding any contrast to the photograph. As we go in these next lessons, we're going to see how we use these different techniques by themselves and in combinations with each other to really change the tonal values of a photograph.